let's talk about the very last one, the Jupyter Notebooks. Now, this one is really, really interesting. And it's very popular with data scientists and machine learning people because, well, let me show you instead of explaining it. In order for us to use Jupyter Notebooks, we can actually go to anaconda.com. No, this isn't a snake website. This is a distribution, a platform that allows us to download a ton of tools that Python engineers use. And like I said before, a lot of data scientists, a lot of people who are working with machine learning would download Anaconda because it comes with all these tools that we need to be productive instead of downloading them one by one. And here's the thing. You can actually just download Python with Anaconda. So if we didn't go to python.org initially and just went to Anaconda and clicked download, well, that was going to install Python for us as well but I wanted us to go through the official way of downloading it instead of Anaconda because we want to understand how things work. So in here, all we have to do is click download and you'll be able to download the Anaconda distribution. And you can see that it's the most popular Python in our data science platform. And you can see that when you download Anaconda, it comes with a lot of things that we're going to use throughout the course, such as Jupyter Notebooks, it comes with different plugins like NumPy or Bokeh or Pandas or even TensorFlow. A lot of things that data scientists use. Now, if you scroll down, it will detect whatever machine you're on. So you can download based on your version. So if you're on a Windows, you might have to click Windows and make sure you download version 3.7 or higher and based on whatever computer you have. Most of you will probably have 64-bit. That's something dependent on your machine. If you're on Linux, again, you'll have different options as well. Now, you can click on download here, or you can even click on documentation, read more, and go to installation. Here, we'll have a step-by-step -step guide on how to install Anaconda. Now, I want to give you a warning. You don't have to do this optional number two step, which is to verify data integrity. This is something that you do for security reasons to make sure that you're downloading the right package. So that is completely optional. You can skip it over and you can walk through the steps to make sure that you install it properly. Now, one of the things that you'll get is this option, especially on Windows, to add Anaconda to my path environment variable. I recommend, and they do as well, to not click here. Because remember, we've installed Python initially already. So by clicking that and adding it to the path, it's going to conflict with an older version of Python that you may have installed a couple of lessons ago. So make sure you follow this, this guide and you see that Anaconda recently announced that they're going to include PyCharm for Anaconda as well. So again, if in the previous video, oh, you've already downloaded PyCharm, you can skip over this step as well. So that's the thing with Windows, with Mac, again, it's very self-explanatory. You just click through the process, install, and everything will be done for you. And if you're on a Linux machine, you will have to use your terminal and essentially have to run this command that they'll give you in order to run Anaconda. And remember, we want to use Anaconda 3 because we want to use Python version 3. Now, once you have installed Anaconda, I'm going to give you a warning. It's a pretty big distribution. It is quite big. So if your computer doesn't have enough memory, doesn't have enough storage, there is another option, which is Miniconda, which is a smaller version of Anaconda that doesn't come with all these packages. And most likely in this course, you can get away with just running Miniconda as an option. Now, let's say you've installed Anaconda. You should have it in your applications right here. All you need to do is simply click on it and it's going to launch Anaconda for you. Now it might take a little while just to get everything set up, but once it's on, look at that. You have the Anaconda Navigator and you have a few things here that you might recognize, such as VS Code. You can actually install it through here. You can use things like Spider, another IDE like PyCharm. 
You can also have things like our studio if you want to get into our programming and really focus on data science. But the one we're really interested in is the Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebooks are extremely popular notebooks that if you're doing any sort of data science or machine learning with Python, you're for sure using. I love them and you'll see why in just a second. Now, you might have to install this if it wasn't installed, but otherwise, once installed, you can just click on launch and let's see what happens. Did you see that? It opened up my browser, my default browser, and it took me to localhost 8888. Now, if this doesn't happen for you automatically, you might have to just type in manually into the browser, localhost 8888. But otherwise, it's going to open up this for me, which right now, if you look at it, we're in our desktop. I can open my Python files if I want to. If I click on them, look at that. I get my Python files that I can edit and type things into. But this isn't really why we want to use Jupyter Notebooks. Instead, we want to create a new Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to click on New and make sure that we select Python 3. Once I click on Python 3, we get a new Jupyter Notebook. And this notebook, which is untitled, can, well, we can just name it My First Notebook. I'm going to rename and check this out. If I go to my desktop, I have some folders here. I have a hidden folder, which is the checkpoints folder, which is Jupyter Notebooks keeping track of my files. And then I also have my first notebook dot IPYNB. This stands for IPython Notebooks, which is what Jupyter Notebooks used to be called. As you notice, they are not dot PY Python files. There's a special type of file, the IPython Notebook file, which can be opened with Jupyter Notebooks. Now, the reason we have a browser here is that Jupyter Notebooks needs a GUI or graphical user interface for us to write this. It's not a code editor where we have the code editor screens. Instead, it's using the browser to allow us to run this program. Even though it's using the browser though, you're able to run this offline. So if you're on an airplane, you can still run your Jupyter Notebooks and practice coding. Now, the way Jupyter Notebook works is using these cells. So these cells I can print or I can write different code in Python. So if I do this, I can click run and look at that right away, it gives me the output. And now I have a second cell where I can say, let's say four plus five. If I run this, look at that. I run a different cell with a different output. Now, instead of us always constantly running run, we can also just use the shortcut shift and enter to actually run the code. So let's say, for example, we're doing is five greater than four. I can run shift enter and it gives me the answer right away. Now, the beauty here is that it's almost like creating notes for yourself, right? I'm able to run different cells, see different outputs, get immediate response to my code instead of in a code editor or an IDE where I had to write everything in one file and everything ran at once. And as we get into machine learning and data science and data visualization, we'll actually see that we use Jupyter Notebooks because they're so easy to visualize these results. Now, one other thing with Jupyter Notebooks that is really, really nice is this idea of the notebook where instead of just always having code, which you can see over here, if I click on the drop-down menu and click Markdown, I can now type text like, this is my first Python or Jupyter notebook. And I can write different sort of notes here. And once done, I can do Shift Enter and look at that. I have my notes in this book so that maybe as you're learning for the rest of the course, you can have different Jupyter Notebooks to take notes, run code, verify it, and well, be extremely organized. And you can even post these on GitHub and share them with other community members. 
And all we have to do now is, well, it automatically saves. So you can see over here that anytime we open Jupyter Notebooks, let's actually do that. I'm going to close this, close this as well. Yes, let's quit. I'm going to open Jupyter Notebooks one more time by clicking on Anaconda. It's initializing, takes a bit of time, but eventually I can launch my Jupyter Notebook. Again, it's going to open up my Jupyter Notebook on localhost. You'll see over here that the localhost has changed to 8889. So that may happen if, for example, localhost 888 is already taken. But if I click here on the Jupyter Notebook, remember the IPython Notebook, I go back to my Jupyter Notebook with all my text, all my files. How cool is that? And by the way, going back to this local host, the reason that this is actually still taken is, well, if you look over here, I have two terminal windows because I technically didn't close the session or the server from last time. So because I did that, Anaconda automatically said, oh yeah, localhost 8888 is already taken. So let's just increase the number to 8889. So you want to make sure that you close these once you are done. And when I do that, it tells me connection failed because we've stopped the server. It no longer works. So if I type something here, you see that I get a star and it's not doing anything. If I do four plus five, again, it's not running because the server is no longer running. All right, let's take a break and I'll see you in the next one.